You already know the drill. Let's continue. Can a powerhouse country win Miss Universe 2024? This time around, I want to focus and deep dive on Philippines, Chelsea Manalo. Perhaps the contestant that I have studied the most in this entire batch, as you guys know that I am a huge fan of pageantry in the Philippines. I followed her national competition from beginning to end, from the moment that Chelsea was announced as a candidate to the moment that she was crowned as the national title holder. And all I can say is that to the international audience, to the people who don't follow pageantry in the Philippines as closely or might not be as familiar with her, I can understand for a lot of them why they might be overlooking Chelsea. Chelsea has a very soft personality, she's a very kind girl, she is very soft-spoken, but this is not a reason to overlook her. Recently, when I made my video about my standouts for the Gala de las Catrinas, she was actually my standout of the night because I thought that the girl was able to deliver a very smart look, which truly embodies what I have seen before in her national competition. This is a girl that although she might fly under the radar at first, she will go on stage and she will outperform veterans, fan favorites, social media stars. Chelsea has a very interesting background coming from the modeling world. So this is a woman that is very comfortable in front of a camera who is a natural born performer. She is also a woman that comes from humble beginnings. That's something that you can feel in her personality. Whenever she approaches people, she is very down to earth. There's no ego. She is able to connect with everyone. And I think that's so important, you know, for people not only to like you as a title holder, but also for them to be able to relate somehow to you. A big part of being a Miss Universe is about being able to connect with your audience, to inspire them. So how can you be inspired by someone that you cannot connect with or that you cannot relate to in any single way or form? On top of that, I mean, going more towards the side of Miss Universe and the inclusivity and all of the changes that we have had in the vision and mission of the organization, Chelsea Manalo represents a shift in what the Philippines has been sending internationally for years. It has been a topic for the past couple of years why the Philippines send sometimes halfies and girls who are mixed with other ethnicities. And a lot of fans try to discredit the track record of the Philippines by saying that some of the victories have been by halfies. Well, this time around, Chelsea is also representing the beauty of a mixed Filipina, but contrary to her predecessors, she is the very first Filipina with African descent. And listen, I have lived in the Philippines for the past couple of years. It's a very beautiful, diverse, inclusive country. However, it is no secret that in Asia, there is a colorism issue. People are obsessed with white, fair skin, and for a lot of people, Chelsea is disrupting that vision, that industry that has been set in place. And I'm not just pointing out the Philippines. I'm saying in so many countries in Asia and all over the world. In that sense, Chelsea is what you can call a transformational leader because her presence by itself, it's already challenging the norms. And that's precisely what she has been spreading in terms of her advocacy and just making sure that she brings awareness to these issues and give visibility to the communities that are marginalized and penalized because of these stereotypes that have been perpetuated for centuries at this point. Now, in terms of Chelsea's chances at Miss Universe, especially of winning the Miss Universe crown, it's a little bit tricky, to be honest, because when you look at the track record of the Philippines, whenever the Miss Universe pageant has been held in Mexico, the Philippines has gone unplaced every single time that the competition took place in Mexico. I do think, though, that Chelsea is well positioned this time around to obtain at least a placement leading to the competition when we were not hearing as much about Chelsea's preparation. And for the first couple of days, I was very confident Chelsea could obtain at least a placement in the top 30. That by itself is already history in the making for the Philippines. As remember, before, they just couldn't place whenever the pageant was held in Mexico. But now that things are starting to pick up with the Gala de las Catrinas, and in the upcoming days, the girls will have many opportunities to showcase their performance skills, their communication levels. Uh, I feel like Chelsea will be able to show the world really what we got to see during her national competition and the reason why she was able to take that crown from so many fan favorites and even veterans. With the stars aligning, I feel like Chelsea has the potential to place in the second cut of the competition, perhaps even top five. The challenge here really is to get the, 
the management of the organization on board. This has been said, I mean, even a couple of days ago, there was a controversy with the video of Anne and Osmel talking about whether they like Philippines or not, you know? So I feel like it's not really about her performance anymore. It's whether or not the organization sees it and they want to have a title holder from that country. And of course, to get the judges on board as well. But personally, I'm very happy because I know that Chelsea will not disappoint on the performance level. I feel like she has the whole packaging to do very well in the competition and most importantly, to make her country proud, which at the end of the day, that should be the focus of the entire journey for every single one of the delegates.